Hello and welcome back to the JNCIS Enterprise Routing and Switching video training series. In this video we're going to discuss BGP or Border Gateway Protocol. We will explain the concepts, operation, and functionality of BGP, including BGP basic operations, message types, attributes, route path selection and process, and iBGP and eBGP functionality and interaction. So let's get started. BGP is a path vector routing protocol. It listens for TCP connections on port 179. BGP comes into the picture when communication is required between different autonomous systems. There are more uses of BGP when used in large MPLS VPN networks. It's also used to separate large OSPF domains. BGP uses the routing information to maintain an information base of network layer reachability information, or NLRI, which it exchanges with BGP systems. BGP is a classless routing protocol. It supports IP prefixes, regardless of class definition defined by IP version 4 class A, B, C, D, and E networks. It completely relies on Transport Control Protocol, or TCP, to establish the sessions. BGP doesn't have auto neighbor discovery, so you will need to statically assign the neighbors running BGP. Currently, the Internet uses BGP version 4 in general as Exterior Gateway Protocol, or EGP, as defined under RSC 4271. Let's talk a little bit about when to use BGP. When you have a large network and need redundancy over distant devices, then we use BGP to connect. Typically, in the case of multi-homed ISPs, you need redundant connections to your remote sites using different ISPs. So if one ISP link is down, you have an alternate link to connect through. In case of a smaller network with one or more remote sites, then this can be implemented by just taking a default route to the ISP and other sites can connect to the head office through the static IP address. It is best practice for a network engineer to consider how to run a network with the lowest budget and best network connectivity. What is eBGP and iBGP, and where are they used? This diagram shows devices running eBGP and iBGP. EBGP is used when you have multiple connections to different autonomous systems running BGP. So for the inter-AS communication, we will use eBGP. BGP can also be used as iBGP. It is always run when you have multiple BGP speakers within an autonomous system. For example, multiple routers connected to different autonomous systems speaking BGP as the iBGP connection typically exists between remotely connected routers, there is a requirement for an iGP or interior gateway protocol within the autonomous system. BGP's TCP session is established using regular routing tables. On this diagram you can easily see that the routers connected on AS65521 and AS65522 are running iBGP as we have more routers in those autonomous systems running BGP. As a point on configuration, while looking into the configuration of a network, how can you determine if the eBGP is used or where the iBGP is used? The answer is when you establish a BGP relationship with a peer, the session will be either an iBGP or eBGP session. If the two peers are in the same autonomous system, the BGP session will be an iBGP session, or interior border gateway protocol session. If the two peers are in different autonomous systems, the BGP session is an eBGP session. If you think about it in terms of the i being interior and the e being exterior, then it becomes self-explanatory and easy to remember. BGP peering sessions. As we discussed earlier, BGP peering requires manual configuration and there is no auto discovery of neighbors possible. It starts with the TCP connection first, and once it's established it will undergo the BGP connection states. 
BGP will use TCP port 179 to connect. This will be the destination port number for the peers to connect and establish the session. Not every BGP peer will open this port, so if you have two routers and the BGP is configured on both, the router that initiated the BGP connection or the router that was configured first will listen on port 179. Understanding this will help you in troubleshooting BGP issues. TCP provides a full duplex, connection-oriented, reliable byte stream service to BGP. BGP considers a connection between two peers to be idle until a TCP connection is established between them. With the TCP connection established, the endpoints are assured of a reliable connection. There are six BGP neighbor states. We have the idle state. No incoming BGP connection is accepted at this time and the client will prepare for a TCP connection. Then we have connection state, which waits for TCP to establish. If it succeeds, the local system sends an open message and transitions to the open sent state. If the transport protocol connection fails, the local system restarts the connection retry time and changes its state to active. The active state. BGP will try to acquire a peer by initiating a transport protocol connection. The open sent state. BGP waits for an open message from its peer. Once received, it is checked and verified to ensure that no errors exist. If an error is detected, the system transitions back to an idle state. If no errors are detected, BGP sends a keep alive message. The open confirm state. BGP waits for a keep alive or notification message. If no keep alive message is received before the notification hold timer expires, the local system sends a notification message stating that the hold timer has expired and the changes its state to idle. Establish state. BGP can exchange update, notification, and keep alive messages with its peer. While the negotiated hold timer is non-zero, and if the local system receives an update or keep alive message, then the hold timer will restart. When the hold timer reaches zero, the local system will again send a keep alive message and restart this hold timer.